Hello everybody, Hooded Cobra Commander 788 here, and I apologize for the crappy webcam video. Uh, I'm just shooting a quick intro here. Uh, we're going to be doing things completely differently in this video, just totally differently from the way I usually do things. I had intended to do a review of Tomax and Zaymod in this video, but I decided that I just didn't have all the things that I needed to do a proper review. So I'm setting that aside and I'm going to do something different. I, instead of looking at a vintage G.I. Joe uh, toy, I'm going to look at a modern Joe. Recently I picked up some retaliation G.I. Joe action figures on clearance at uh, Toys R Us. And I thought I'd go ahead and review one of them. I'm going to review Retaliation Lady J. But before I get started, I have an announcement and I have a question. First of all, the announcement. The location for the 2015 G.I. Joe Convention, JoeCon, will be in Springfield, Illinois. Uh, Springfield, as you probably know, has a lot of meaning in the G.I. Joe universe. I intend to be there. I am planning to be at JoeCon. Uh, in 2015. So if you're able to make it out and if you see me wandering around there, go ahead and say hi. I'd be happy to uh, meet you. I'd, I'd love to meet some people. Now I have a question for all of you and it's kind of a question about general collecting and uh, maybe you can give me your opinions and insights. Uh, I have been saving my money to get something big. Something really big G.I. Joe related. And of course I do a re review of it when I got it, but it's big and it's expensive. Um, and since I've been saving my money, I haven't been getting a lot of other Joe stuff recently. Um, and I really like to have a steady flow of new G.I. Joe items uh, coming to my door every week, and I haven't been getting that. And I've noticed that I don't get as much joy when I get a, a rare item, an expensive item, a big item, as I do when I get a whole bunch of the little stuff. Um, but I do still want the rare items. I do still want the big items. So I'm not sure if I'm going about this the right way. I mean, should I leave those expensive rare items for later uh, and just focus on filling some gaps in the collection I already have? Um, or should I just go ahead and get those items now uh, because it will be easier going forward to fill those gaps with the more common items? What do you think? Should I, should I get the big stuff now? Or should I get the little stuff now? What would you do? Please leave a comment on this video. I would really like your opinion on that. This is Retaliation Lady J. She was released in 2013 as part of Wave 2.5 of the G.I. Joe Retaliation movie-themed action figures. Of course, these were related to the uh, G.I. Joe Retaliation movie starring The Rock and Bruce Willis. In the Retaliation movie, Lady J was played by Adrian Palicki, and I guess this is supposed to be her likeness. And I think that's good enough. It looks not too bad. I don't really know as much about the modern era G.I. Joe figures as I do about the vintage figures, so you'll have to bear with me as I go through this review. Uh, I do not have a figure stand that will fit a modern figure, so I'm just using some sticky tack on one of her feet. Let's start out by looking at the packaging. This is the card that she came on, and as you can see on this side, it is the regular G.I. Joe Retaliation uh, movie logo with uh, Dwayne Johnson and Snake Eyes on there and really nothing else. It's a very plain packaging. On the flip side we can see that this action figure is worth zero flag points because they don't do flag points anymore. Uh, and she has no file card. The closest she has to a file card uh, is this up here in the corner right here where it says Lady J is a covert ops specialist and weapons expert on the G.I. Joe team. Using her elite intelligence skills, she helps uncover an evil Cobra plot. She disguises herself in a daring mission to infiltrate the lair of the enemy to prove the terrifying truth. And we see covert ops weapons are included. We have a little bit of the cross cell on this side, some of the other action figures that are available. And as far as the card art for Lady J goes, we don't have the awesome vintage style painted uh, artwork on here. We just have a few uh, photos of the action figure with her weapons. One thing I did not notice on the packaging when I reviewed the Battle Cotta Roadblock uh, is this blurb on the side of the uh, plastic blister which says... G.I. Joe is the world's greatest special ops fighting force with top secret ninja training from the toughest of masters. Led by the ultimate ninja commando, Roadblock, 
These elite heroes defend the globe from the evil forces of Cobra. And again, it insists that Roadblock is a ninja, which I frankly just reject. That doesn't make any sense at all. And just in case we don't have enough ninjas, we have the Arashikage symbol next to the name Lady J, and that makes no sense whatsoever. I don't really have a problem with ninjas in G.I. Joe. Ninjas have been a part of G.I. Joe for a long time, uh, and I can accept that as long as it's done reasonably, as long as it fits in the story, but it doesn't really fit in the story when everybody on the G.I. Joe team is some kind of ninja. Let's start as we usually do and look at the accessories first, and oh my goodness does she have a lot of accessories. Uh, she has an arsenal, far more accessories than she could ever actually carry. Let's start with the spear gun, which is obviously an homage to the vintage era Lady J's power javelin. Uh, and I guess that looks pretty good, but uh, I never liked the original Power Javelin to begin with, so I guess I don't really care that much for this either. She includes two submachine guns here uh, that are just plain green, uh, no special coloring on these. Uh, they're kind of plain looking. And honestly, again, she has more guns than she can carry, so I guess if you had other figures, you could just give these guns to other action figures. She has another assault rifle, and this one has some crazy paint apps on it. Look at all the different colors on this. This looks like three or four paint apps on top of a black plastic uh, rifle, and it's, it's amazingly detailed. Um, it looks like it has a grenade launcher uh, underneath here, under the barrel. Uh, it has a scope on it, uh, and it's just incredibly detailed. In fact, there might even be too much uh, paint detail on here. It looks a little bit patchy. Uh, I think I would have liked it more if it had more of a unified color scheme. But there's no denying this is a pretty awesome assault rifle. We're not done with accessories. Oh no, there's much more. Uh, she comes with this... Uh, assault rifle with a, a foregrip here, and I actually really like this one. I think this one is my favorite of all the accessories she comes with. Uh, it has the the uh, paint application on here, but it does have a more unified color scheme. It looks like it's kind of painted for desert camouflage. Um, it's got a, a darker colored magazine there. Uh, it's not as patchy as this one. I mean, this one looks almost like a quilt. Uh, it almost looks like I don't know, the, the army didn't give her a gun, so her grandmother knitted one for her, uh, and she used different color yarn. It's just all patchy. But this is a really nice-looking assault rifle. This is definitely my favorite accessory. In addition to the assault rifle, she comes with a pair of backpacks, and I have one on her. Uh, this is not like the old vintage-style backpacks that peg in the back. This actually has some rubbery shoulder straps. Unfortunately, when you have the backpack on, uh, her hair gets in the way a little bit, and it restricts the motion of her head. Uh, but uh, let's take this backpack off and take a closer look at it. Uh, it just looks great. You know, we never got this much detail in the vintage era. Uh, and even though I'm not a big fan of the modern figures, it, there's no denying that this accessory looks really cool. The other backpack she comes with is this one. It has some rockets which go with her recoilless rifle here. I'll get to this in just a minute. Uh, now this is definitely a modern take on the classic uh, backpacks that came with um, short fuse uh, and with zap. Now the color obviously matches short fuse's uh, backpack much better, and as you can see it's larger. But the function I think matches more closely zap's backpack uh, in that it uh, has ammunition for uh, a recoilless rifle, and Zap, of course, was the bazooka soldier. Even though bazookas are outdated, they're not used by modern uh, military anymore, nonetheless, he was called the bazooka soldier, and that's kind of what she has here, a modern version of the old uh, recoilless rifle. Here's a close-up comparison of the classic uh, next to the modern. And, of course, unlike the classic backpack, this one has removable rockets. Each one of these four rockets actually comes out and you can fit them in the rocket launcher here. And the rocket launcher itself comes apart in two pieces and you just put the rocket in the front end like this. Uh, it goes in about that far. 
Uh, it, it's not spring loaded, it doesn't fire or anything, uh, and of course this does, it'll fall out pretty easily, but it's still kind of cool that you can uh, actually put the rockets in, and you couldn't do that of course with Zap or any of the uh, vintage era figures, so that's a nice modern update. One problem I do have with these rockets though is that really no kid could play with them. Uh, once these got taken out of the backpack one time, any kid is going to lose this in about five seconds. And I really do think that this is kind of the kind of thing that is made for uh, adult collectors rather than kids. Um, I, I just think that maybe this feature might be lost on children. And we're not done with accessories. No, there's more. She comes with two uh, little knives, kind of shiv style knives. Unfortunately, she doesn't have anything to store them on. She has no sheaths for them, at least as far as I can tell, and they don't fit in any of the other accessories. So these are just out there loose and, you know, just ready to be lost. And finally, she comes with a machete, which is pretty nice. Uh, it looks pretty cool. I don't know why she has it. Uh, again, she doesn't have any place to store it, and Lady J is really not known for wielding a, a machete, but it's still nice. And again, she comes with so many weapons that if you have other action figures, you could just give this to somebody else. Let's look at Lady J's articulation, and this is where there is a great difference between the modern era figures and the vintage figures. Uh, she can look left to right, uh, and she can look up and down. Her head is on a ball joint, but unlike the vintage figure, the ball joint is where the neck meets the head, rather than where the neck meets the shoulders, so that's a little bit different. And like with a lot of the modern era figures, she has the feature where you can just pop the head straight off, and if you wanted to, you could put somebody else's head on this body. For instance, I could put Firefly's head on her body, and now Firefly has boobs. Her arm at the shoulder has a greater range of articulation than the vintage figure. It can swing all the way up, and of course it can swing all the way around like the old figures. Uh, at the elbow, she can bend at the elbow about 90 degrees, and uh, she does have a swivel. She can swivel her arm all the way around. Uh, she also has a swivel at the wrist, which is a nice feature that I wish vintage figures had. She can move at the torso a little bit, not too bad, and at the waist she can move her legs apart really far. Uh, that's much uh, greater range of motion than the vintage figures. She can move her leg up at the hip a little less than 90 degrees, and she has a double jointed knee so she can bend her knees all the way back. Some of the modern figures have an additional point of articulation that the vintage figures didn't have, and that's at the ankle. And at the ankle, she can move her ankle uh, foot forward and back like that, and she has a little bit uh, of a rotation, but not very much. I don't know how I feel about the ankle articulation. The vintage figures did not have ankle to articulation, and I really didn't miss it, but I guess the modern collectors really like that extra articulation at the foot. Looking at the figure overall, this is a pretty good looking action figure, but one thing you notice immediately is that she is really skinny. Uh, she doesn't look athletic at all, and I would think that anyone, man, woman, anyone, who's in G.I. Joe, which is an elite military force, is going to have to be pretty athletic. But she doesn't look athletic at all. She looks bone skinny, which to me seems really weird. I do really like her digital camo on her shirt and her pants. That looks great. Uh, I, I wish uh, vintage figures uh, had that. They just didn't have the technology to do that back in the 80s. And we have some nice color interests, some variation in the colors that, uh, that keep the figure looking interesting uh, and not too boring, even though she does have a very military look to her. As I noted before, uh, her ponytail, uh, which is made out of a slightly rubbery plastic, does get in the way of backpacks. As you can see, it's covering up the hole for the backpack there. Uh, that's the hole that this backpack would go in. Uh, let's demonstrate that here. See, it fits in pretty well, except except the head, uh, the hair bumps right into it. Honestly, I would skip the backpacks anyway. Uh, this backpack and, and this uh, weapon really don't have anything to do with Lady J. She never carried this type of weapon really in any representation that I know of. So you can just skip this and maybe give it to another action figure if you want to. Uh, and this backpack, I mean, it looks really cool, but uh, it does obstruct her head movement, so she can just skip that. And you know what? I'd really just give her this weapon. I think she looks great with that weapon. Uh, it's a good-looking gun. Uh, she looks good with it. Uh, she can grip it with both hands uh, because it has a foregrip here. Uh, and I just think it looks great. You can get some great battle poses like that, and uh, I think that would be my choice. 
So what do I think of the modern figure as compared to the vintage action figures? And unfortunately, I don't have a vintage Lady J to compare. I'm sorry about that. But just in general, comparing the modern figures to the vintage. Uh, the modern figures look great. They are awesome. They have some great articulation. And I do like them. Uh, I didn't like them initially, but I've warmed up to them, to them a bit. But I honest think, honestly think that with all of the accessories they come with, especially the micro-sized accessories that a kid would instantly lose, I really think that they're meant for adult collectors. They're not really meant for kids to play with. And I think that's one of the problems that I have with Modern Joe. Uh, they're not really designed to be toys. Really, if they had just given her this weapon and left all this other stuff out of it, I, I would have been fine with it. And if I got this action figure as a kid, uh, I would have been thrilled. I thought would have thought it was really cool. Um, I just think they, they don't need all these other little bits. A confession, I didn't really like the G.I. Joe Retaliation movie at first. Uh, there were some parts of it that just really bugged me. But I have come around, and I do like the movie now. I have accepted it as an important part of the G.I. Joe history. Um, I can enjoy it now uh, for what it is. Uh, and so I don't really mind action figures made uh, in the visage of the actors that appeared in the movie. And so I like this. I, I really do. I, I really didn't think I would like it because I'm not a big fan of the modern era figures, but... I'm warming up to them, that's all I can say. That was my review of Retaliation Lady J. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Remember, when I hit 100 subscribers, I'm going to be giving away a free vintage G.I. Joe toy. You don't want to miss out on that. And don't forget to like my Facebook page. You get updates on my Facebook page that you don't get anywhere else. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.